I'm going to show you how to set up this asset inside of your own blueprints. I've created several ways this can be done depending on your preferences. The first method is to just use each of the functions directly. As you can see here, there's a few of them. This is the most complicated, but it gives you the most control by far over how everything works. The first thing you'll need to do is actually spawn the emitters used to display the predicted path, which is what this node does here. You don't actually need all of these. I've just set this up to allow the appearance to be randomized for demo purposes. You can just set those directly. We have the color of the beam here uh, and the textures used by it first one is the individual points along the beam and then we have the actual marker at the very end of the beam. You only need to run this once when you first start displaying the beam. Uh, after that you'll want to calculate the actual trajectory that the projectile is going to take. This one you'll want to run every frame while aiming. For that reason, I've got it hooked up to the event tick here, but you can see I also hooked it up to a gate. So the gate will only open and start running event tick when you start aiming, and then the gate will be closed again and stop running every frame when you stop aiming, as you can see here. The trajectory calculation has a few different versions of this function, depending on what kind of line trace you want to run. There's the line, the sphere, the capsule, and the box. Which one you use will depend on the shape of the object that you are using as the projectile. In this case, you can see that we're using a sphere as the projectile, so that's the type of line trace that I used. A lot of the base settings here are fine, but you'll need to set the starting location of the projectile, where it's going to launch from, and then you'll need to put in the velocity of the projectile. You can see back here how I'm getting those values. Over here, this is where it's being launched from. Let's go to the viewport and put a little marker here at the end of the barrel where it's being launched from. And then over here, we're getting the control rotation and launching it directly outward from there. So it gets fired forward from where the camera is aiming. And in this particular case, we're actually using projectile movement on the projectile. So you'll need to know what the base velocity on that component is. Here I have it stored as a variable. It's always the same, so there's no point in actually going through the complicated process of trying to use blueprints to retrieve it directly from the actor. And we're just rotating the velocity of that projectile movement component based on the where the camera's aiming. And you can see here that we're just using the same values that you would be inputting into the projectile when you spawn it. And then since we're using a projectile movement component, we want to check this on. Because a lot of the physics calculations are different if you're using a projectile movement component versus just actually setting the velocity of it directly with a set velocity node. Something like this. If you're using this, then you would not have that on. 
afterward we'll actually place the emitters spawned earlier back here so that they all line up with the calculated trajectory here. This is another thing that I'll run every frame immediately after doing this. We'll just hook up the trajectory point output from the calculation into here and then the out hit and then the other two come directly from the initial spawning of the emitters here. And then once we're done aiming, we'll just destroy each of these emitters that we spawned earlier. There are also separate functions that can be used to change the color of the emitters after they've already been spawned here, or to change the textures of them after they've already been spawned. This is useful if you, let's say, want to have the beam change to a different color depending on how far away you're aiming, or maybe you want to have the ground marker change depending on what you're aiming the beam at. In the case of the demo project here, I've made it so that the color and the texture get randomized each time you right-click while you're aiming. Next, I'll show you one of the macros that really simplify setting everything up. This is the full version of the macro here. It cleanly combines together all of those nodes I showed you earlier and makes it a lot easier to set up, but you also do have a little bit less control over it. The different inputs here basically activate each of those different nodes I showed you earlier. Here you would run this to spawn the emitters, perform the trajectory calculation, and then destroy the emitters once you're done aiming. And you can set the color or the texture and then down here we have all of the different settings for each of those individual nodes. You can see it's a little bit of a mess though having all of these options mashed together. Not all of these are actually even used depending on what settings you're using. For example, let's say the shape is a line like we have here. None of these settings are actually used then. If you have it set to a sphere, you're only actually using the radius. If you have a capsule, you're using the radius and the half height, and these are for the box line trace. So I have another option that's a little cleaner, but again, you have less control than you do here. That would be the structured version of the macro. The stuff that you really need to be able to control at runtime is all exposed here, like the color, the location, the velocity, but everything else is all compressed inside of this variable here. And if we look over here, you can see we have all of those options stored away inside of this. And technically, pretty much all of the same controls are here as in the full version, but it's being a structure, it's a lot more difficult to actually change any of these and to have it take effect while the beam is already there being displayed. You would usually want to set all of these in advance and just leave them as is. And then finally we have the simple version of the macro. Let's see here. This gives you the least options for controlling how it works, but it's by far the easiest to set up. It's used mostly for debugging or prototyping. You only have the bare minimum options available here. It's always just a simple beam and it only, only does the line trace. You also can't change any of the physics involved in case you have a non-default like physical material assigned to anything. You can also use this if you don't actually need any of those extra settings, if you just need the most simple version. Hopefully this guide was helpful to you. I have more detailed documentation linked below in the description.